Hello everybody, my name is Sniping Fun, and I welcome you all back to the next newcomer in this long running series of newcomer ideas for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, or the Super Smash Brothers series. Various newcomers I've talked about so far, I've done numerous characters, I've done 123 characters so far, ranging from third parties, and Nintendo, and retro characters, Ayumi Tachibana, Rex and Pyra, I did freaking Skull Kid, and like Shovel Knight, and Shantae, and various Tails characters, Fire Emblem characters, and, and whoever the heck else, a bunch of characters. We are in character, and as I mentioned in the last video, when I talked about um, Cress Elbane from the Tales franchise, from Tales of Fantasia, he was character 123. When I jumped into 124, I was going to do another Nintendo character and another Nintendo retro character, which I haven't done in this series for quite some time. And I already showed a picture of the character. And some of you may have played this game, some of you maybe haven't. It's one of the most old school Nintendo games ever dating back to the Famicom, the NES, back to the 80s, the arcade days even for Nintendo. And that's Bubbles. From Clue Clue Land. And uh, why I feel she should be a character in uh, Smash Brothers and be a possible retro rep to be added with the DLC, the, the fighter pass we have now, or maybe a future fighter pass if there's a second fighter pass for Smash Ultimate, or maybe even a future, you know, Smash Brothers game in general. Maybe when Smash 6 comes out, like some 8 to 10 years from now, maybe she could be a possible choice. But like I said, when I brought this series back, after obviously the game released and whatnot, we know the full base game roster. The series is still going forward, but back when I did the like earlier parts of the list, it was the percentages for the characters for possibility of them getting into Smash Brothers was either percentage to get in the base roster or possibly as DLC. Now that we know the base roster, that's out of the way, that's far back there. We're talking exclusively about Smash DLC now. So it's the same as always, why the character makes sense to get in, moveset ideas, and percentage chance, but that percentage chance is solely in the DLC now. With that being said, without further ado, let's get this you know, video started before the intro goes on way too long with character 124, Clue Clue Land's own Bubbles. Now, why do I feel she should get in? Why should she be the retro rep, oh, a, a, a retro rep added into Smash Bros. over, say, the Excite Biker, or the Balloon Fighter, or the Mock Rider, or Mike Jones, or some other old school retro character, Takamaru, even though he's in the Sis Trophy, but you know, like, there's all these retro characters people keep talking about, and, and this is, it's not just now, but I mean, during Smash discussion over the last like year when Smash Ultimate was initially announced last year, or even when Smash Bros. 4, or Brawl, or Melee, when people were talking about old school Nintendo characters to add, they always talk about those other characters. She's not one that you normally see mentioned. Maybe I see a few people here and there mention the possibility of having her in the game, but it's not really a whole heck of a lot of people. So but why would I put her in? But that's the sole reason. I think she would be a retro rep that no one would see coming and she would stand out. And Sakurai loves that. Sakurai likes to go against the grain sometimes and pick characters that aren't just there for popularity reasons. That fans request them, like demand these characters get in and request them and demand them. Fan popularity isn't always what he's looking for. And it, it, it affected Smash Ultimate a little bit more than past Smash, game, you know, Smash games. But it's never really affected Smash Bros. as a whole because he's always looked for characters he personally wants, he personally feels will fit in, with occasionally putting in fan favorite characters. It's mostly always been his game. So I think it's an interesting, unique game that stands out. It's not someone, a, a character that people expect, a franchise that game series that people expect to get in for a retro rep. They always go for these other reps and forget about stuff like Clue Clue Land and Devil's World and whatever the heck else, you know, so. It's in that realm of he would use it to shock gamers and be different and stand out. And it would be a retro rep that well, yeah, it would stand out. It's also a launch game for the NES in America. It's one of the launch games, Clue Clue Land. That could be a very iconic thing to represent that. It came out in 1984 in Japan on the Famicom a year later when it released, you know, the NES released in America in 1985. So it's one of the most old school, like, home console when Nintendo was trying to get out of, like, the, the game. Like, when they started bringing their game... You know, their systems to America after the crash from Atari in 83 and whatnot. That was one of the first games they started to try to bring out. So it's like early on in the rebirth of gaming in America kind of thing. So I think that way it stands out. It's, it's during like the old arcade days when they were trying to transfer from, from arcades to like home console type stuff. And it's like a super classic Nintendo game. So I think 
it, it just like those other games, it's super classic, but in its own right, I think Nintendo still kind of pays tribute to it because, like, the characters have made appearances and, like, cameos in other Nintendo games before. I think I recall hearing, like, DK Jungle Climber had her as a secret character. I'm not fully sure about that. I never played the game, but I heard about that. I looked that up, and I, I seen that mentioned, but I never actually played the game, so I have no idea. So she has cameos and something. The game has been referenced, I think, through stickers and especially trophies and melee of her. So it's not like they forgot it. Like, Nintendo doesn't seem to always forget about their old classic games. Sometimes they just never really utilize them, but they sometimes throw little bones and little Easter eggs and little things for old school games, and they never really forgot about Kluku Land. And it'd be kind of cool to just throw in this random retro character that doesn't really get anything. Well, other retro characters sometimes get a lot more cameos, mentions, Easter eggs, appearances, secret DLC, download, unlockable, whatever. Like, Kluku Land never really gets that, so throwing in a bone would be kind of nice. And it has been referenced in Smash Bros. before through trophies and stickers. And I think you can get an interesting moose out of her that's different than the standard ones. Because when you see Excite Biker or Mike Jones or Takamaru or the Devil from Devil's World, the Satan guy, and you know various characters like that, you could probably pinpoint a moose in your mind, but you really can't with this game because it's more so like a Pac-Man-esque puzzle type of game, arcade type of game, and she doesn't really attack. But you can make a unique moose around that where her how she plays her game, how you move around the game, kind of can be turned into a moose set, and I think that alone would probably be unique and, and different. So really, the major reasons are it's a launch title in America, one of the earliest games in Japan as well. It's so far out of left field, and no one would see it coming, it would stand out. She has an interesting, unique, different style of moveset, been referenced in Smash Bros. before, and it's just a super classic Nintendo game, so I think it'd be kind of a cool retro rep to add, if not as DLC, maybe the next Smash Bros. game. Moveset ideas. Now, I had to do a little bit of research on this one, given that I never actually played Clue Clue Land. I don't know if it's on the NES Classic Edition, but I never got around to playing every single game on the NES Classic Edition, so if it's on there, I never played it yet. But obviously, I never grew up with the NES and never really played a lot of the old classic NES games, like everything on the NES. That's like a Nintendo system I'm not super familiar with because it came out before I was born. But I had to do a little bit of research because I never played it. And I've made, I think, a fairly decent, interesting moveset that would stand out and be different among the rest of the characters. Maybe it's not a moveset that's the best for a Smash Brothers fighter, but Sakurai's turned Villager and Isabelle into fighters, and freaking the you know Rob and the Duck Hunt and you know team of the dog and the bird and you know various different characters. If you can make a moveset out of stuff like that, you can make a moveset out of this. So it's not a fighting moveset. A lot of the stuff is not. This character does not punch. Does not kick. It's pushing and rebounding off the walls and everything kind of thing because it's very a pac-man-esque game that she's basically a balloon fish so it's basically she's swimming so i'm making her a very floaty swimming through the air kind of character and you have to move by using po turning posts to change directions and move around the stage kind of thing she can move normally but she like the animations for her moving is going to be a lot of turn posts because she's it's like a like, in order to change direction, she has to turn around on little turn posts and stuff in the game. If you ever played Kluku Land, you know what I'm talking about. So she's a very floaty character, like a Kirby or a Jigglypuff kind of thing. And she swims through the air and is a very, very light character. So she probably could be knocked heavy distances if you hit her at a high percentage. So she's not a very, like, grounded, like, be able to easily take a lot of damage character. So I'm going to say the smash attacks are various forms of pushing opponents because inside the actual Clue Clue Land game, you have to push opponents away from you and to take them out kind of thing or trap them in the walls and stuff like that. So a lot of her, all of her smash attacks are forms of pushing her opponents using when she turns around on the rebound, pushing them off the stage. It will damage in Smash Bros. It doesn't actually damage the enemies per se in the game, but it will damage the Smash Bros. because you have to have some sort of moveset and have them fight and hurt each other. So she pushes a post, so when you rebound, it will cause more damage. You can charge it, you can charge off the rebound and do more damage. So it's like, oh, she's going this way, rebound, and the opponent's coming this way, and she rebounds, comes back, and you hold it and charge it, and you rebound, push them probably off the stage, or push them back or something, it will cause damage. The special attacks are going to be a lot of like sound waves, stun, and damaging opponents because that's another form of ability she has in the game to stop the you know the enemies from catching her when she's moving around the stage. Is she can stun them, so she's just a little like kind of little like sound wave type thing. She's a fish, so she can cause stun them, and if you do it high enough, you get in a 
probably some damage. It will have to be some sort of damage because it's a moveset for Smash Brothers. So higher, you know, if you charge it, it should be probably chargeable anyways. You, um, charging it will stun them, but standard ones will probably just do a little stun for a second, but damage them and charge it more will give them more damage. She can also uncover golden inglets, which is the whole point of the game. You have to, like, there's a certain pattern on each stage, and you have to rebound off the walls and uncover all of them. So I'm assuming while she's moving around the stage, she can uncover them, and then she can probably grab them and smack opponents with them or throw it. So she's not actually attacking, but she's using something from her game as a form of attack. Now, she's not physically punching and kicking, but she'll grab the golden inglets when you uncover them on the stage. You can throw my opponents to damage them or probably walk up to them and smack them or move up to them and smack them kind of thing. And that's about it for, I think, her moveset. Like, it's very simple, and it's all I could really get, but you could probably make some unique stuff about it. So her smash attacks are a bunch of rebounding off of, like, turn posts that you can create while you're changing directions, and you can rebound into opponents and push them off the stage. Smash, special attacks are a lot of sound waves that stun opponents and moving around the stage and uncovering golden ingots that you could probably throw or smack opponents with. And final smash will be a stage complete. Well, like what's gonna happen is like in the game, if you open, if you trap opponents in the golden ingots, they get trapped in it. So she'll like you'll know, you'll summon the final smash. There'll be a few different patterns because each pattern is like oh here's a smiley face, here's a submarine, here's a whatever in the game. So maybe you can make little references to other classic retro games here. I think that'd be kind of funny and cool. Maybe throw like the the Satan Devil from like Devil's World or some sort of sight bike flag or some sort of little Mario mushroom or you know, throw a little Easter eggs in there and be kind of cool. And there's maybe about five to eight random ones and you summon the inglets on the stage. It's not a cutscene based one, it's not an attack one. You summon it and the opponents will just bounce off it and get damaged. So it's kind of a worthless one, but if you get enough damage on them after the final match is done, you can do a rebound attack and smack them off the stage with a high percentage damage. So it's not really the most useful one, but it's more useful probably than Peaches or something. But it's like one of those, it's like, think of it like the giant X thing that Bowser Jr. and the, you know, the Koopalings do, or the Icicle Mountain in Brawl that, and I think they still do it now since Ice Climbers are back. Like the ice, uh, Icicle Mountain, it's one of those things where you summon something on a stage and if, poets, if an opponent hits it, they'll receive damage. And if you have them in the middle of the pattern, they'll bounce off and and their percentage will go up. That will be her, her her thing. It's a stage complete. And you can damage opponents, and then it will weaken them so you can damage them and knock them off the stage post-final smash. That being said, let's get on the percentage chance I can see her actually getting in. It's not good, especially DLC. I think her best chances would be in the next Smash Brothers game. But even then, there's a lot of retro characters out there from Nintendo that make much more sense and would be more fighter-esque characters. Even the Excite Biker feels like it'd be more of a fighter-esque character. And then obviously someone like Mike Jones, Takamaru, um, the Devil from Devil's World, uh, Ayumi Tachibana can even make more of an interesting Musa given it's a detective game. You know, but yeah, there's a lot of retro characters that make more Musa potential or maybe are more iconic than Clue Clue Land than Bubbles is. But I think it's pretty decent. I'm going to give her, at the most, a 20% chance. It's not great. It's probably a little high than I think it really should be. But if they wanted to throw a retro character in the DLC from Nintendo, and Sakurai had a... I mean, Nintendo would pick someone else, because even that Nintendo's picking the choices. But if Sakurai had a choice and wanted to be like something different and stand out-ish, it probably would be something like this. I mean, not saying specifically... Kluku Land Bubbles, but he'd probably want to be something different if he had a choice, but Nintendo has a choice, and the chances are very low, but she's an iconic character that's referenced in Smash Bros. before, is historical, it'd be kind of f cool to see a moveset based around that kind of thing, like a puzzle-esque type of game, but yeah, her best chances are probably in Smash Bros. 6 or beyond, when they add more retro characters, given that I don't think any Nintendo characters will be at least in this Fire Pass, unless we get in our Fire Pass, I have no idea, but even then, I'd say 20% probably the best chances she's gotten. Even then, that's probably pushing a little bit, maybe more 15-ish or 10. But like 20%, I don't think it's super high. It's possible, not the best, but still possibly there. And that's it for a Bubbles from A Clue Clue Land. That's it for the video. The comments. Would you like to see this character? Have you ever played Clue Clue Land? I mean, I think it'd be something different. It's not a character I personally would want. But sometimes seeing how characters stand out and are different make them unique to me. And then make them fun. Like I might not be I like you know you know 
pretty much like wanting to see the character and it'd be super iconic to me and a character I super heavily want, but it'd be a fun character I think that deserves it and could pretty much be a choice to get in. Move said idea, final smash, 20% too high to put it on there, we can discuss it down there and have fun. And that's it for character 124. When I return to 125, I'm going to be returning to the world of Tekken. I've already talked about Jin and Kazama. I've already talked about Kazuya Mishima. I have to talk about the third member in that family that is causing all the massive Mishima Zaibatsu trouble in that freaking series. Uh, I have to talk about Hayachi Mishima now. And uh, I think it's well-deserved given, you know, how iconic he is to the series. And he's been used in crossovers before. That's it. My name is Dr. Fun. Peace. Please subscribe if you want to have a lovely day. See you all later.